Hello, this is Chris Duncan in Lubbock, Texas. I'm the founder of Find Your Focus Photographic Education, and today we're going to look at Nick Software's Silver Effects Pro 2 on a way to make black and white conversions of your digital images. Of course, Nick Software is a great creator of plugins for Photoshop, Lightroom, and Aperture. And they offer color effects, silver effects, HDR effects, and many other products, including Viveza and the Snapseed app for your mobile applications. But today, we're dealing with silver effects. In my opinion, this is the best way to make black and white conversions. So here I'm in Photoshop. I'm going to open up Silver Effects Pro 2. And while this is loading, let you know that you can check out more of Nick Software at nicksoftware.com. Um, download a free trial of this software for 15 days. And if you like what you see and you love the effects you get, you can then purchase it and use promo code CJ Duncan and save 15% on your purchase. So here we are in Silver Effects Pro with this image. And if you look over the left, you have all these presets um, that you can use um, with Silver Effects, or you can make your own. On the right is all of our controls. If you notice, if you watch any of these other tutorials, every NIC interface is the same. They all look the same. The buttons are in the same place. So it's you're not lost going from one to the other. It's all very familiar. So we're going to operate globally first before we get into our selective adjustments. Just like we did in Viveza, we want to edit globally, then we go into the control points. So we have our brightness, contrast, and structure. Those are our three main controls in, color, in uh, silver effects. So right here, obviously we have main brightness and then highlight. This is what I love about this is we can, br can change the brightness of each tone individually, not globally where the whole image goes up or down but tonality wise. So I can bring those highlights up, I can bring that mid-tone brightness up, or that shadow brightness up. And then they have this dynamic brightness slider, which I've really fallen in love with. Okay, I think our brightness level is looking pretty good there. Contrast. Always need to add contrast. Anytime we do brightness, we tend to flatten out the image. So we want to add contrast to bring back some depth. Just like with the brightness, we have tonality contrast. I can amplify my whites. I can amplify my blacks. And that's what I want to do here is amplify those blacks. And then we have the soft contrast slider, which is really nice. I mean, you can take it one into kind of an HDR look to a real soft, supple, moody type look. Um, so that's what's great about these Nick products is they're not a once and done. They, they can cover the gamut on types of photography and image making. And I kind of like this a little bit moody, so I'm going to bring it about right there. I think that's looking good. Okay, now structure slider. This is where we get to have fun. We get to bring out all the detail in these rocks. So once again, we can do it by tones. I can bring up my highlight structure, mid-tone structure, and shadow structure. And to me, shadow structure is where you have get all this great depth in this image. Like as I bring that up is that shadow structure, and I'm all the way at 100%. So it just pulls out all that detail and the grain in those rocks. And now we've got an image here going. I'm really liking this so far. And then we have fine structure, which picks up even more little details, and I'm not going to mess with that slider too much on this. Okay? And then we can, if we think we're blocking up in our shadows or highlights, we have this tonality protection here that we can adjust those. So I'm going to bring my shadow up just a tad, just a tad. Now before we get to any selective controls, I want to slip on down here to color filter. Just like if you were shooting black and white film, you'd put a you could put a red filter, an orange, green, and blue filters on it. Red is kind of what we would use for this a little bit. I'm going to bring the strength down just a little bit, um, just to give it a little bit of that filtered look. We have film styles, and then we have the sensitivity. This is really nice where you can adjust different color tonality and their value in the image. So if you want if you want more red brightness where the reds are, you bring that slider. Or yellows. If there was green in this image, which there's not a lot of green, if it was a tree or something, I could make the tree darker or brighter based on its sensitivity to that color shade. There's the cyan shade. Here's the blue. There'll be lots of blue in this because it's in the shade. So I'm going to bring my blue up and look at that water get a little bit brighter. I see that? Because that water at it high sp at that long shutter speed, it's blurring, it's in the shade, it's going to have a blue tint to it. So I'm bringing that sensitivity up to just adjust the tonality of the water. 
And then I have level levels and curves, um, toning, and of course edges. But I want to go back to what Nick is famous for, and that's its U-point technology, and that's to be able to selectively control a portion of the image without complicated layer masking, brushing, and erasing. So I'm going to control point right here on the top of this rock. And right there you can see my circle of influence is just right on the top of that rock. And I'm going to bring that brightness down and that contrast up right there on that rock. Oop. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to duplicate that and drag it down to this corner of the rock where it's just a little bit hot. Not too bad, just a little bit hot though. And now I want to make that water sing a little bit more. So I'm going to get another control point and put it right here in the water and brighten up that water. A little contrast. And I'm going to bring the structure down because I don't want that water to look gritty. I want it to look smooth and wispy as it's been, as it's dragging, as it's going along these rocks. And I'm going to hold my option key, duplicate that control point, and hit all the portions of that water. I think that's looking really good. There's a, probably a few other things we could do to that. For sake of time, we're not going to get into that, but I think for the most part, that's looking really good. Here's our original black and white, just a grayscale basically, and there's with some of our, sele our selective controls and our global controls that Silver Effects Pro gives us. One thing I want to do this is I want to give this a rugged border. And actually, I'm going to burn that bottom edge too. So I can, just like we did in the dark room, we could burn edges. I don't know if y'all remember using the dark room. Just helps darken that edge and brings your eye back up because it needs to be on that waterfall. Don't need to get lost down the bottom. Then I want to put an image board on it. And I think this probably was at 10, what is it, 11? Yeah, it needs a nice, rough, rugged border to match this image. Just the size a little bit, spread, and then I'm going to put a rougher edge on it. I thought it was. Let's see. I like four. Let's do four. And then I'm going to hit this very border button. It's just going to kind of rotate it around until I kind of like what I see. And I think we're pretty good right there. So once again, here's our before, here's our after. And I'm going to click OK. It's going to save it as a new layer back in Photoshop. So I always have my original intact. One great thing of this, if you make it a smart object before you open Silver FX Pro, you can reopen it as a smart object. All your control points, all your sliders are there, and you can go back and make adjustments if you feel you need to. So here it is. It's going to load back on our new layer. We've got our original color image, and now our, our enhanced black and white landscape image from Yosemite. So hope you enjoy this quick little tutorial on Silver FX Pro and how to enhance your landscape imagery. My name is Chris Duncan, and with Find Your Focus Photographic Education, you can find us at findyourfocus.org, or you can and also check out Nick Software at nicksoftware.com. Download the free trial and save 15% using promo code CJ Duncan. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.